Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. So we've been looking at the series of what it means to be blessed. And our, our definition of blessing and God's definition of blessing seems to be a little bit different. And uh, so when we're talking about blessed, we've been looking at the different Beatitudes. Beatitudes comes from, um, from the word blessed. So um, we looked at the first four. Last week we looked at the fifth Beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. mercy. Amen. So we need the mercy of the Lord within our lives, and uh, we are a blessing. Mercy from God is needed for our redemption due to our sin. Mercy is for the guilty. You cannot receive mercy if you haven't accepted guilt. I'll say it again. You cannot receive mercy unless you have accepted guilt. You can't say no. I'm not guilty, but you want mercy. You can't receive mercy unless you've acknowledged your guilt. You've acknowledged that you're a sinner. So therefore, we see that we receive God's mercy, and then in receiving God's mercy, God then requires us to show mercy, because as we receive the mercy of God, the overflowing mercy of God, now we start showing mercy towards others. Um... It's not just that we're guilty of sin in receiving mercy, but we also need mercy because of our inability to accomplish the purpose of God within our lives. So it's not just that we receive forgiveness, but when God sees us in our need and our struggles, His, His, His um, interjection into our lives is showing us that He has mercy. For God so loved the world that He sent Jesus. Even while we were still enemies of God, looking at the need that we had, that's mercy. Feeling sorry for us, that's not mercy. Are you hearing me here today? So therefore, it's not just that we need forgiveness of sin, it's also that we need God's help to do His will. That is mercy. So in showing mercy and looking in our lives, have you received the mercy of God? That's, that's the question. Because in receiving the mercy of God shows your reaction to it and shows your mercy that you have towards others. To the degree that you accept and understand the revelation of the greatness of God's mercy towards you, that gratitude will then show in your handling of other people within your life. Are you hearing me here today? So that's why in the world, if you love me, I love you. If you smile at me, I'll smile back. If you give me, I give you. If you show me mercy, I show you mercy. But you see, that's not how God loved us. If we look at uh, last week's message, Matthew 5, 43, it says there, love your enemies. That's... We can love those. I mean, some of us just struggle to love those who love us. <laughs> Amen. I mean, people love you. You struggle to love them. The Bible says, no. It says, love your enemies. Who are your enemies? Your enemies are those that use their resources, their time, and their effort to sow destruction within your life. They plan the destruction. They use their monies for your destruction. That's your enemy. God says, love them. Are you hearing me? He says, bless those who curse you. Blessed is not words while I bless you. No, bless comes from a heart felt uh, admonishing or, or giving of goodwill to somebody else. In other words, you wish somebody well. That's blessing. So when I bless you, what I do, I, my heart is for you to be wished well in your future. And what does the Bible say? He says, those who curse you, 
your heart must for them to have a great life and future. Thank you for that. Amen. I receive that. Amen. <laughs> with all that is within you. Thank you, my sister. Can you get a chair? Come sit here by me. I need someone to help me preach. I need someone to help me preach. Amen. He says, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And it's amazing that Jesus doesn't stop there. He's got to link it. And he links it and says that you may be children of your father. The evidence that you are the child of God is shown in your mercy because only your acceptance of His mercy, you will show mercy. But if you've not truly accepted His mercy, you will not be grateful. Are you hearing me? So it's in accepting His mercy within your life that you now show mercy. He says, and that's when you love your enemies, you're so thankful for the mercy you receive because you know you should have been in hell. But see, the thing is, some people, they don't think they deserve hell. You're too cute for hell. I'm, I'm too cute. God won't put this in hell. Huh? God won't put this in hell. No, all of us deserve hell. But for the mercy of God. And when you recognize and realize that mercy, now you start showing mercy. Can I get a big amen there? And that's why within our lives, in this merciless world that we live in, where this attitude of self-centeredness, self-absorption, self-preoccupation and egotism rules within our lives, where if I don't look out for myself, who will? Seriously? You don't believe in God? No, that's not the DNA of Christ. Can I get a big amen there? No, mercy comes from God where He's not just, doesn't just intervene and forgive our sins, but now He also helps us in our need. And thus when we show mercy, it's not a detached emotion of sympathy. Mercy is action. You feeling sorry for someone doesn't mean you're showing them mercy. You feeling doesn't do anything. Only when you do something, that's mercy. You see somebody attacked? and you feel sorry, that's not mercy. Getting involved, risking your life, risking your resources, risking your stuff, risking your reputation, that's mercy. Because Jesus became of no reputation, the Bible says, taking on the form of a servant, of a man, a slave, so that we can have life. God risked it all for us. Are you hearing me here today? So what is mercy? It's a genuine compassion expressed in genuine help. It's a selfless concern expressed in selfless actions. Therefore, when we look at forgiveness, mercy, we receive forgiveness from God, but God's mercy flows, God's forgiveness flows from mercy. But mercy is much more than forgiveness. So when God shows His mercy, it's not just that He forgives us, He also helps us in our mess and our situation. Are you hearing me here today? God's mercy does not just forgive our transgression, but reaches to all our weaknesses and need. And I love Lamentations verse 3 and 22. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because, of His, com because His compassions fail not. They are new. Every morning, great is your faithfulness. Say with me, thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Come on, say, great is your faithfulness. Come on, great is your faithfulness. Come on, throw up your hands and say, Lord, great is your faithfulness. We need the mercies of the Lord every day, every morning. You are faithful, God, where I'm not faithful. Great is your faithfulness. 
God's mercy to His children never ceases. But that's why we can be merciful. In today's message, it's Baptism Sunday today, by the way. Hallelujah. And uh, every baptism, we, we, we baptize close to a thousand people every, every time in, our, in, our, in the 54 venues that we have. So we're excited about the people being baptized. Hallelujah. Forgiveness flows out of mercy. In today's message, I want to show you the relationship between mercy and love. We looked at mercy and forgiveness. We receive forgiveness, but mercy, the forgiveness flows out from mercy. But as forgiveness flows out from mercy, so mercy flows out of love. Amen. Isn't that incredible? Amen. Mercy is a part of love. So it flows out from love. And the scripture we're looking at is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. Who is rich in mercy. Not rich in Ferraris. Not rich in properties. Not rich in anything physical, who wants to be rich? What rich do you want? Nudge your neighbor. Say, what rich are you running after? Come on, nudge your neighbor. What rich are you running after? We go, yo, yo, that guy is rich. Oh, he's rich. Oh, okay. You mean he's got a lot of mercy? Hello? Because of his great love. You want to be great? Oh, he's great. Why, he's, why is he great? Everybody knows. Oh, no. The capacity to love. Being rich, being great. What are you running after? Are you running after being rich? in mercy, great in love. Because as you seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, all these low life stuff. God doesn't mind giving you stuff as long as you know it's low life. God will give you money as long as you know it's low life. Money is just a tool. It's like taking a hammer and saying, oh, this makes you awesome because you've got a hammer. No, money is a tool. It's what you do with it that determines. Amen. If you're rich and great. If you're giving your money away, don't tell me how much you have. Don't tell me what car you bought. Tell me how many cars you've given away. I think Shanae and I, we've given like seven or eight cars away. How many cars have you given away? It's not how many cars you have. Not the properties you have. And nothing wrong with wanting, having money and having stuff. But that's not where the greatness is. But being rich. Rich in mercy. Where do we receive the mercy from God? <laughs> Turn to your name and say, Oh, I'm rich. Mm. Rich, baby. That's me. Come on, turn to the other side. Hey, I'm rich. This is me. I'm rich. You see, now when you understand your priorities, God gives you the low life stuff, like a position and a promotion. That's low life. That's second. Now, we're in the world. It's not that it's not important. We need it. We need health to do what we need to do. We need the finances to do what we need to do. But that, that's just the tool. What are you doing? That's where the wealth is. 
the transformation, the change that you are bringing. And the question then is, are you merciful? Are you hearing me here today? So even when we were dead in our trespasses, so just as mercy is more than forgiveness, love is more than mercy. Love loves even when there is no wrong to forgive. Are you hearing me? So if we look at mercy and love, we now look at mercy and grace. So we looked at mercy and love. Now my question is, what about mercy and grace? Mercy is related to grace which flows out of love just as forgiveness flows out of mercy. Now I want to show you something because I want to create a new habit in 3C if that's okay. We give it a try. See how it works. Doesn't work. Change, you know. But let's try to do Bible. Let's, let's, what do you say? We give Bible a go. And if the Bible doesn't work, hey, you know, but let's give the Bible a go. How's, the, how's that sound? So if you look at the way they greet one another in the Bible. In 1 Timothy 1, 2, 2 Timothy 1 verse 2, Titus chapter 1 verse 4, Paul greets. And then of course John does it, Peter does it in the other epistles. But let me just use, I don't have time to quote them all. But let's take 1 Timothy 1 verse 2. So to Timothy, a true son in the faith, he says, grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, mercy, and peace. Grace and mercy, you must understand, it's not the same thing. Peace, not the same thing. So when he greets them, he says, grace, mercy, and peace be to you. From God our Father, not world grace, not world mercy, not hum human peace, yes. but that which we get from the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. So when you speak, you're speaking, you're prophesying. You're speaking grace into somebody's life. You're speaking mercy into their life. You're speaking peace into their life. Are you hearing me yet today? Said me, grace, grace. Mercy, mercy, peace, peace. from God our, Father, God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now turn, talk to your neighbor. Greet your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Yeah. Grace, grace, mercy, grace. and peace and from God our Father, God our Father. Through, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, my Savior. My Savior. That's how we greet. That's how we greet. Are you hearing me? So we speak it. It's not like, hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, my hair. Did not, my hair. Hey. I did my hair. Hey. Hey, my outfit. No. Don't let the greeting be about, be a person of mercy. And even in your greeting, what do you say? What do you say? Can't hear you. What do you say? Grace and, and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to change that? So grace and mercy have a close relationship, yet they are different. You see, mercy has to do with pain and misery and distress. With, um, has to do with the consequences of sin. And whether because of our individual sins that we do, the wrongs we do, or whether it's in the world, um, all of our problems at the end of the day is as a result of sin. Are you hearing me? And it's with these problems that mercy helps. And I want to show you grace. On the other hand, grace deals with sin itself. You see, mercy deals with the symptoms, 
But grace deals with the cause, with the root. Are you hearing me? Mercy offers release from the punishment of sin. In other words, the consequences of doing wrong. But grace offers a pardon. You know what a pardon is? You know, like with the president, when they, if you've sinned, he pardons you. In other words, it squashes. There's no criminal, there's no record. They wipe that criminal record off forever. See, grace pardons as if you never sinned. Is, is, are you hearing me? You see, mercy eliminates the pain, but grace cures the disease. Mercy relates to the negative, but grace relates to the positive. In relation to salvation, mercy says no how, but grace says heaven. Are you hearing me? Mercy says, I pity you. Grace says, I pardon you. Isn't that incredible? And that's why we need the mercy of God. That's why we need the grace of God within our lives. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. amen. Now in closing, I want to speak about mercy and justice. <laughs> mercy and justice. Mercy is connected to justice, although they seem to be incompatible Justice gives exactly what is deserved, whereas mercy gives less punishment and gives more help than what we deserve. So it, it seems that it's incompatible, and therefore it's difficult for some, um, uh, some people to understand. It's they, that they struggle, struggle with that. And people have questions like, how can God be both merciful and show justice at the same time <laughs> to the same person. If God is completely just, how could, he, um, how could he not punish sin totally? Would God being merciful not contradict his justice? That's the question. But here's the truth. God does not show mercy without punishing sin. Say it with me. God does not show mercy without punishing sin. Are you hearing me? Yes. You see, for God to offer mercy without punishment would violate His justice. Amen. Mercy that ignores sin is false mercy. Because false mercy is either shows, it shows no mercy and it shows no justice. For example, we look at David. David had his son Absalom that was rebellious and he was wicked. Remember that story? Yes. When he was young. Yes. But here's the thing. David did not deal with Absalom's sin. His attitude towards Absalom was one of unrighteous sentimentality. Because he was connected, he felt sorry for him and didn't deal with the sin. And let me tell you, that's neither justice nor mercy. Are you hearing me? Yes. And it served rather... It endorsed Absalom sin. It actually sanctioned Absalom within his wickedness. And we find the same today. People, you know, they say you're unloving. They say you're unkind when you hold people responsible for their actions. Listen to me, that's cheap grace. Cheap grace is not just. And cheap grace is not merciful. Why? Because it overlooks sin. It leaves sin undealt with. It, it, uh, and, 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 and trusting in this type of false mercy leaves you in your sin. It leaves you in your mess. To abandon justice is to abandon mercy. Are you hearing me here today? To overlook sin is to reject the truth. You got it? Mercy and truth are inseparable. The Bible teaches us that they are together. Psalm 85 and verse 10, it says, mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have, have kissed. They work together. 
You can't have the one without the other. In actual fact, in John chapter 1 and verse 14, when he speaks about Jesus and he speaks about the only one who came to the Father, he said he was overflowing with tender mercy and truth. Isn't that incredible? Amen. Amen. He was overflowing with tender mercy and truth. Now listen to me. Listen to me. In every true act of mercy, someone pays the price. There is always justice. God did it for us through Jesus. I want you to listen. Get this. He did it through Jesus. And because he did it through Jesus, so he expects others and he expects us to do the same. So when we're talking about being merciful, being merciful, to is, be, being merciful is to absorb the affliction of someone else. Like Jesus absorbed our sin on the cross of Calvary. So we are also called to absorb that of someone else, to carry the weight for somebody else, to cover the debt of somebody else. That expectation God places upon us. Are, are you hearing me yet today? And therefore, to enter into the circle of mercy, we've got to understand that to enter the circle of mercy, of God's mercy, without repenting of our sin is wishful thinking. God's mercy apart from repentance is a false gospel. Are you hearing me? God offers nothing but merciless judgment to those who will not turn from their sin, turning to Jesus. Listen to me. Your good works will not bring you to salvation. Amen. Hear me here today. Amen. Your good works will not bring you to salvation, nor presuming that, oh, he's a good God. God's goodness will, no, 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 no. God's a just God. God can't overrule his word. That's why presuming God and God, that's why when people say, oh, there isn't a hell, I can't, if he's such a loving God. No, there's got to be justice. That's why there is justice. Are you hearing me? So presuming, presuming God's goodness will give you entrance into the kingdom, kingdom is a false gospel. You need to repent and be saved. Are you hearing me? And that's why Acts chapter 2 and 38, Peter says to them, he says, repent and let every one of you be baptized. Repent and let every one of you be baptized. Repent and let every one of you be baptized. For the remission uh, in the baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's repentance. The price has been paid through Jesus, but there's got to be repentance. Amen. That's why 1 John 1 verse 9, he says, if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you do what? If you confess, if you acknowledge. Well, Lord, if I sin, please forgive me. Oh, shut up. What rubbish is that? What you know you're a, come on, oh, please. Hallelujah. I mean, you're alone. No one's listening to you. Own up to your rubbish. Seriously? I can understand when you've got somebody around you and you want to protect your image and stuff like that, but at least when you're alone. Amen. If you want God to help you, if you want God to deliver you, if you want God to, to work within you for you to become that which He has called you ultimately to be, you've got to repent. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge your issues. Bring it before the Lord and say, ah, yeah, I didn't need to. I didn't lie. I was shut. What was wrong with that? Ah. But then we justify our sin. We become self-righteous. No, I had the right to do that because he did that. For he, was, uh, he did it first. That's not mercy. Are you hearing me? 
Who wants the mercy of God in their lives? Who needs the mercy of God in their lives? Are you hearing me? So the evidence of this life, and I'm going to close right now, and we'll continue next week. Big stuff next week. Whew. Oh, hallelujah. I started preaching the first service. I realized I wasn't going to get and finish it and give it the, 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 the attention that it needs. So I'm, I'm going to continue next week, and we're going to get into some deeper stuff. Hallelujah. But are you excited? You understand? So, so it's when God works within you and you understand His mercy and He understands, you understand His grace. It's in that time that God brings about that change and that transformation within your life when you acknowledge you're a sinner. And now God gives you mercy. But he doesn't just forgive you. He also helps you in your inability, in our inability to function according to God's plan for our lives. Are you hearing me? Why are you not loving your enemies? I don't know how. No, you don't want to. I can't, I can't. No, you've decided you won't. Why? You don't trust God. We're so full of ourselves. We're so self-absorbed and narcissistic. We take offense for any little stupid little thing. And then we say, oh, She's just sensitive. <laughs> no, she's a narcissist. Oh, he's just a sensitive soul. No, he's a narcissistic soul. And you can hide behind your emotion. And you can hide behind your feelings. But it's until you come to God. God loves you so much, but you love yourself more than you love God. You're manipulating people to get attention to, no, no, no. God hasn't called you to be a slave. You're not a slave. God's mercy is available. Then you've got to get to that place and say, Lord, I'm done with me. Let's do it your way. Let's do Bible. Let's do Bible. Let's do Bible. I said, let's do Bible. I said, let's do Bible. Let's do the Word. And what is it, where does it start? Coming to the Lord. And won't you just stay aware or just stand on your feet and become aware of the presence of God in this place. I'm not here, please, I'm not here judging anybody or speaking down on anybody. I need Jesus just as much as you need Jesus. I can be all humble today and tomorrow I become full of myself. Like this, that's how we are as human. And suddenly we become proud of our humility even. Oh, I'm so humble, rubbish. We need Jesus. Every day we need to die to this flesh. Every day, say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need your mercy in my life. Amen. Amen. Just there we are. Just lift up your hands unto the Lord. Become aware of the presence of God. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We look at our life. We look at our actions. We look at our reactions. We realize we need you in our lives, Lord Jesus. We need you in our lives. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. You can just reflect in the week and the faithlessness we've had the way we've reacted to people as if there's no hope it's like slapping God in the face and saying I don't believe no 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 Lord forgive us forgive us for where you are and just there where you are I want you to say these words to him say with me have mercy on me O Lord according to your unfailing love 
according to your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me on the inside, Lord, from all this guilt, this condemnation. Cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my sin, Lord. I acknowledge my rebellion. I acknowledge my faithlessness. It troubles me day and night. It's before me. I notice, Lord, that against you and you only have I sinned. I want to be honest, Lord. I want to be transparent in my heart. Oh God, please purify me from all my sin. Wash me. And I know, Lord, that as you cover my sins with the blood of Jesus, create within me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit, a loyal spirit, a committed spirit. I need your presence. I need your Holy Spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, Lord, and help me to obey the Bible, to obey your word. Place within me your desire to do your will. Thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. It's available to me that your mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you blessed today? Hallelujah. Those that have been baptized, why don't you just grab your, your stuff? Those that have been baptized today, grab your stuff quickly. Come stand here in front. I want to do a prayer with you. And uh, we're going to baptize those today. Church, let's give them a great hand. Amen. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. At all the venues, all the venues, just come forward. All the venues, just come forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a hand. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that incredible? Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give them a great hand. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over them and at our different venues as well. We're going to do the baptism. And I'm, I'm going to do, after this, I'm going to do the altar call. So don't go away. Don't go away. Service not over. We're just releasing those, getting baptized so they can go get changed so long. Church, stretch out your hands towards them. Thank you, Lord, as we have on this Sunday and all our services, hundreds getting baptized. Thank you for what you've done within their lives. And that today they're going to stand up in the newness of your life as we bury the old man. They're going to rise up in the new man, new creation in you, leaving the old man and that old life, leaving it behind making a public confession, a public confession of their faith. Amen. I thank you, Lord, as from today, they will walk forth and be fruitful in everything they are and do, that your purpose will be fulfilled in and through their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, while we're still standing, um, the men, you go to that side, the ladies to that side. You can go past here, that's fine. The ladies to that side, men to that side, and you're going to go get changed there. Come on, church, give him one more hand. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? Huh? Come on, give the Lord one more hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now listen to me. If, you, if you're not baptized, you want to get baptized today, you can make a plan. We'll make a plan for you. You can go... Um, you say, when must I get baptized? Well, when somebody dies, we bury them as quick as possible, right? So there isn't a time frame. You don't have to do a class or whatever. It's publicly through the confession of your faith. And even if you didn't bring stuff and you want to get baptized, we'll organize a towel or a, or a, or a T-shirt or whatever you need to do. So the men that side, if you want to get baptized and you feel conviction, uh, you want to get baptized, you're welcome to do that and you can just go out there. Amen. Now, I want to pray for those. Let's do, uh, let's do an altar call. Let's bow our heads in prayer because I feel there's some people here, you, you've not yet given your life to Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Coming to church doesn't mean you're Christian. Calling yourself Christian doesn't make you Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't make you Christian. 
Going to church doesn't make you Christian. Unless you're a child of God, you, you're not Christian. You've got to be born of God. John 3, 3 says, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. What does that mean? You're born of the seed of your parents, gives you the right to walk the earth, but born of the seed of God. God comes and places the incorruptible seed of his word on the inside of you. It starts to germinate, permeate, starts to change and transform and everything on the inside. See, out of yourself, you cannot change. You can modify your behavior to a certain degree, but you can't change your heart. You can't change your nature. You'll always go back. Only God can change. But for that to happen, you have to make that choice to invite Him into your life. Acknowledge that you're a sinner and invite Him into your life. And therefore, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, if that's you here today and you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus or maybe you have and you've backslid and you've moved away from God and you want to come back to the Lord today. I want to include you in this prayer as well. And if that's you, I'm going to count to three. I want you to quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, 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 thank you. Hands going up all over the place, all over the place. You can put them down. Thank you very much. You can put them down. Now, I want to do one more thing. It's so important that I do a personal prayer with you, and I want to pray with you. And if you raise your hand, and that's in all our venues. I wonder if you can quickly uh, uh, grab your belongings, don't leave it in the seat, but come out in the aisles, come stand here in front so that I can do a prayer with you. Come on, come on, just quickly come first. Hallelujah. We've got many of you standing here in front, but I feel there's still some of you that need to be here. There's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day. They don't know it yet. In fact, we don't know when we will die. My question is, is your life right with God? Or you might even leave this place and think I'll do it later and never come to that again in your life. Never have that conviction, that conviction you have now, that uneasiness. That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. You think, well, one day, and just forget about it and never think about it again. But you see, one day you'll stand before God and you'll say, remember that, that Sunday I spoke to you and you rejected me. I don't want you to leave here and your life is not right with God. And maybe you're a little bit shy. You don't have to be shy. We've all stood here. We've all stood here. No one thinks anything. And maybe you want to grab a neighbor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can I go with you? You want to go? I'll go with you. Come on, talk to your neighbor. We'll go. We'll go together. But come out. Come out. Come out. Amen. Yes. There is power.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. 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 Who's, whose children are these? Whose children are these? Yours and that's yours. This is huge, by the way. This is huge. This is huge. There's still more coming forward. There's still more coming forward. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a great hand. Amen. See, when you make that decision and say, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, this is what's happening within their lives right now. Are you hearing me? See, the hand of God, the hand of God upon your lives. There you go. You as well. Who do you have there? Come here. There you go. Come here, young man. There you go. What's your name? Daniel. Wow, Daniel, that's a prophetic name. Amen. Hallelujah. My boy, coming, stand your front is huge. You hear me? God's got a plan for your life, making that commitment. You together making that commitment. It's huge. Give the Lord a hand for that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All these young people here in front. Let me tell you, coming forward is not easy. It's not easy. Everybody looking whatever. I mean, you've got to die to yourself and say, I don't care what people think. I need God more than what I care. Let me tell you, in God's eyes, this is huge. Listen to me. And I'm not talking about you being perfect. None of us are perfect. We miss it and we have our issues. See, but this type of faith coming to God you're going to see the hand of God upon your life. Listen to what I'm saying. Therefore, I want to pray together. And everyone connected, just close your eyes. Become aware of the presence of God. And say with me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I give to you. My whole life, I surrender unto you. I trust you. I trust your word that says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called the child of God. And thank you, Lord, as from now, I belong to you. And Lord, I pray your blessing over each and every one of these children, your children now, belonging to you. Every power of the devil broken, every curse removed in Jesus' name. Your hand upon their lives, your protection upon them, your purpose fulfilled in and through them. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.